Good evening, members of the planning board. The first item on the agenda is an extension of preliminary approval for a map of uh, Gyrodyne LLC in St. James, and we have the affidavit of posting. The, the applicant uh, requests an extension of conditional preliminary approval for the subdivision number 1178, map of Gyrodyne LLC. The subdivision number 1178, map of uh, Gyrodyne LLC, received conditional preliminary approval from the planning board on March 30th, 2022. Conditional preliminary approval expired on September 30th, 30th, 2024. The applicant submitted a request for a fifth extension on September 26th, 2024. The extension request is to allow the applicant to continue to work through the Suffolk County Sewer Agency and County Subdivision process. The planning department has no objection to the request and recommends an extension period of six months. The planning department offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. Whereas the planning board has considered the request of uh, Timothy Shea to extend the conditional preliminary approval for the subdivision number 1178, map of Gyrodyne LLC, now, therefore, be it first resolved that the planning board hereby approves a six-month extension of time to the conditional preliminary approval for subdivision number 1178, map of Gyrodyne LLC, to expire on March 30th, 2025. Mr. Shea. Uh, J. Timothy Shea, Jr., Sir Tillman Ballon, 100 Motor Parkway, Hapog, New York, for the applicant. Um, I really don't have much else to say. I think the report is great. Uh, we recently won the Article 78 on this matter. Congratulations to the board, and thank you to the town for all its cooperation and professionalism. And um, we look forward to processing the map and, and hopefully finalizing it uh, sometime in the next six months so that we don't have to make an additional extension request. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to be heard on this matter? Uh, does the board have any questions? Okay, then in the matter of number 1178, map of Gyrodyne LLC, I move that we close the hearing. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None, the hearing is closed. In the matter- I'm sorry, please also the record I've abstained on this issue. Okay, um, Mr. Ryan has, uh, abstains on this matter. So that's four and one, okay? And then in the matter of extension of conditional preliminary approval, number 1178, map of Gyrodyne LLC, I move that we adopt the resolution as read in accordance with the recommendation of the planning department. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 With one abstention. One abstention, and uh, the motion is adopted. Thank you very much, have a pleasant evening. Okay, so. Thank you. The Next item is a waiver amendment request for uh, 57 Mall Drive in the uh, Industrial Park. We have a letter uh, requesting an adjournment to, I believe it's the December 11th meeting. Okay, so uh, does anybody wish to be heard on this matter? Uh, does the board have any questions? Okay, then in the matter of number 591, planned Industrial Park, I move that we adjourn the hearing to the December 11th 2024 meeting of the planning board. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? None. The motion is adopted. The next item is a recommendation to the Board of Zoning Appeals for the subdivision number 1194, map of Cox Trucking LLC. This matter involves a request from the Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, the BZA, to the planning board to review. before the BZA, that's case number 19200. For the subdivision number 1194, map of Cox Trucking, LLC. In order to subdivide the property into two lots, the applicant is requesting the following variance on lot two. Permit environmentally sensitive land to be altered, slopes in excess of 15% on lot two for an existing driveway. Pursuant to section 24831 of the subdivision regulations, the planning board does not have the authority to grant variances related to environmentally sensitive land. This variance can only be granted by the BZA, which held a hearing on October 8th. In addition to the above variance, the applicant is also requesting several variances on lot one, such as increased accessory structure height, <laughs> increased retaining wall height, decrease setback of a fence from a retaining wall, decrease setback of a retaining wall from a retaining wall and permit a fence on top of a retaining wall. These variances are to legalize existing structures on lot one 
and the applicant requires these variances, whether there's a subdivision application or not. These variances are not related to the aspects of subdivision design, such as lot layout, extent of regrading, dwelling location, and public improvements. Therefore, it is recommended the Planning Board have no objection to these variances and defer review to the BZA. The subdivision number 1194 map of Cox Trucking LLC is an application to sub subdivide a 2.81 acre parcel into two single family lots. The property is located, located in R43 zoning district and is surrounded by R43 zoning and single family dwellings. There is an existing single family dwelling on lot one and several accessory structures, including a cottage. The proposed cottage on lot one will be used as a recreation room and for storage, not a residence. At by a private road off Meadow Glen Road. In order to subdivide the property into two lots, the applicant requires a variance from the BZA to alter environmentally sensitive land on lot two. Article, Article 16, section 277-6 of town law authorizes the BZA to grant area variances within a subdivision, but requires the BZA request a written recommendation from the planning board concerning the proposed variances. Town law does not describe the criteria that the planning board is supposed to use in developing a recommendation to the BZA. However, it seems likely that the recommendation should be based around the Planning Board's core mission regarding subdivision approval that centers on adequacy of access to infrastructure and to evaluate whether the subject property can be used safely for building purposes without danger to the health or, or peril from fire, flood, drainage, or other menace to neighboring properties or the public health, safety, and welfare. This recommendation does not examine the requested variances with respect to the five area variance criteria described in section 267B of town law, as the BZA is tasked with evaluating the requested variances with respect to those criteria. The existing alteration of steep slopes on lot two appear minimal in nature and is needed in order to provide access to the proposed dwelling. It is not anticipated that the existing alteration of steep slopes is a danger to the neighboring properties or the public health, safety, and welfare. Additionally, lot two has adequate frontage along the private road, and the private road appears sufficient to provide access to lot two. The Planning Department offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. Whereas the Planning Board has considered the request of the Board of Zoning Appeals for a recommendation regarding variances associated with the subdivision number 1194, map of Cox Trucking LLC. Now therefore be it first resolved, the Planning Board hereby recommends the Board of Zoning Appeals approve the variance to alter environmentally sensitive land slopes in excess of 15% on lot two for the existing driveway subject to the following conditions. A, the cottage on lot one shall not be used as a residence. B, this recommendation pertains solely to the variance requests before the Board of Zoning Appeals and not to the proposed lot layout, extent of regrading, building location, public improvements, and other aspects of subdivision design within the purview of the Planning Board. And C, nothing contained herein shall be construed or deemed as implicitly or exp explicitly approving or endorsing on the merits any subsequent request for any approval of any subdivision for this property, whether or not the request arises out of any variance granted by the Board of Zoning Appeals for said property. Thanks, Matt. Uh, the affidavit? I don't think we have it yet. No? Uh, is there anyone representing the applicant who would like to address the And please state your name and address for the record. And um, spell your name, too. My name is James Fox, J-A-M-E-S-F-O-X. I live at 152 Highland Drive, Kings Park, New York. And I'm gonna represent uh, Daniel Cox. I've been the applicant. I have the signed poster. Thank you. Okay. Any questions from the board? Excuse me? Is there any questions from the board? No. Um, does the board have any questions? I, uh, we have one. Jack. Mr. Lilius? Jack. What? You, oh, I no, thought no, you were going to speak. No, I no. thought you were trying to get her attention. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's fine. That's all Thanks, good. Sure. Okay, and you're in agreement with what, um, the, with all what the is presented tonight? With all the recommendations, yes. And we've, we've, okay. we've given all the information to the ZBA, and we plan on returning, I think, on the 22nd to address any of their other concerns. Okay, thank you. Appreciate Are there any questions from uh, anyone in the audience tonight? Uh, hearing none, in the matter of number 1194, map of Cox Trucking LLC, I move that we close the hearing. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None, the hearing is closed. <clears throat>
Thank you very much for your time. Okay, in the matter of Board of Zoning Appeals recommendation number 1194, map of Cox Trucking LLC, move that we adopt the resolution as read in accordance with the recommendation of the Planning Department. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. The motion is adopted. The next item is a zone change uh, recommendation to the town board for uh, Spark Car Wash LLC. Uh, the reason for the report, the planning board will conduct a public hearing on October 16th, 2024 to consider the above reference zone change petition to change a portion of Suffolk County tax map number 800-114-4-5.5 from neighborhood business to wholesale and service industry and repeal covenants filed on the property. The applicant is Spark Car Wash LLC. The subject site is mostly level, vacant wooded 2.6 acre through lot with approximately 152 feet of road frontage along Middle Country Road and 141 feet of road frontage along Smithtown Bypass. The entire parcel is currently zoned NB. The site is zoned uh, NB and is vacant. To the north is R21. You have the Smithtown Bypass and single family dwellings across the highway. To the south is zoned R10. You have Middle Country Road and an estate recharge basin across the roadway. To the east is zoned R21 and WSI. You have the DOT highway yard. And to the west is zoned WSI and MB, and you have the uh, repair garage, Pep Boys, and AutoZone. Uh, the zoning history, prior to the uh, zone change petition 1994-03, uh, it was zoned WSI and R21. The WSI portion was 300 feet off Middle Country Road, and the remainder was R21. Uh, zone change 1994-03 uh, was filed, and it was approved and rezoned the property from WSI and R21 to NB for a proposed restaurant, subject to the following conditions. Uh, one, the following uses shall be prohibited in order to protect peak hour capacity on this concert, Port Jefferson Highway and New York State Route 25. A, a filling station, B, car wash, C, counter service restaurant, and D, any use producing more than 150 daily vehicle trips. Trip ends per 1,000 square feet of floor area according to the Institute of Transportation Engineers. Two, any proposed use in excess of 150 daily vehicle trips ends per 1,000 square feet of floor area according to the Institute of Transportation en Engineers shall be reviewed for approval by the planning board and town board prior to submission of a board of site plan review application. Three, all access to the adjacent uh, New York State Road shall be in accordance with New York State Department of Transportation permit. Four, the site shall be developed in accordance with the requirements of the NB zone and the parking requirements of the town zoning ordinance. Five, the site development shall include interconnecting access with the adjacent properties. And six, an internal traffic circulation plan shall be required as part of the Board of Site Plan Review application. After that, zone change 2014-06 was approved and that repealed conditions 1C, 1D, and 2 imposed on uh, zone change 1994-03. And this was for a joint <coughs> development project with uh, tax lots tax lots 114-424 and 114-4.2, subject to the following conditions. One, approval of the zone change petition, petition does not imply approval of the site plan submitted with the petition materials. Two, the site must be developed in coordination with uh, Suffolk County tax map number 114, 424, and 114, 4.2, with cross access provided to 114, 4.1. Three, subject to a minimum front yard parking setback of 20 feet from the latest state taking line, shall be provided along the Smithtown bypass, and a front yard parking setback along Middle Country Road shall match the parking setback of tax lot 114-44.1. And four, within 180 days, the applicant shall file a declaration of covenants and restrictions in a form acceptable to the town attorney, agreeing that development will comply with the above conditions. Uh, additionally, the following covenants were filed on the property on December 2nd, 2016. Covenant one, Suffolk County tax map numbers 800-114-424, 800-114-4, and 800-114-4, being the lots comprising the premises shall be developed jointly and in coordination with each lot comprising the premises. And covenant two, the premises must provide perpetual cross access with a parcel known as Suffolk County tax map number 800-114-4, 4.1, 4 
said parcel being owned by Sun Enterprises, Inc. Sun em Enterprises, Inc. is a signatory to this document and hereby consents to perpetual cross access between the premises and the parcel known as Suffolk County tax map number 800-114-44.1. Uh, the proposal, the applicant is requesting that the town board rezone the southernmost 1.54 acres of a 2.6 acre parcel from NB to WSI. This change would also repeal all conditions placed on zone change petition 1994-03 and 2014-06 on this portion of the property. The applicant is also requesting to repeal covenants one and two that were filed on the property on December 2nd, 2016. They have indicated that the prior joint development project with the adjacent parcels was withdrawn and therefore no longer feasible. The applicant proposes to, to develop the southern portion of the site with a car wash and associated site improvements. The site proposes access from Middle Country Road and from the Smithtown Bypass through a cross access easement with the adjacent property, that's tax lot 800, 114, 44.2. The conceptual site plan depicts a 4,000 842 square foot car wash building, three queuing lanes total, totaling a capacity of 29 cars, parking, parking vacuum area, and associated site improvements such as grading, drainage, and signage. This proposal also requires approval from New York State DOT for access onto Middle Country Road. Planning considerations. In April of 2024, the town board adopted an update to the town's comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan is a product of the comprehensive analysis of the town's needs, constraints, and trends. In the section Nest Constant Community Plan, the comprehensive plan analyzes the Middle Country Road corridor between St. James and Nest Constant. The comprehensive plan recommends the triangular, triangular area of land between the intersection of Middle Country Road, Smithtown Bypass, and Alexander Avenue be developed with uses that are compatible with the Smith Haven Mall, such as commercial development, office, or multifamily uses. The proposed WSI zoning appears compatible with neighboring WSI zone land and will not uh, set an undesirable precedent. However, the proposal proposed use conflicts with condition one of the 1994-03 zone change approval, which prohibits a car wash. The condition was adopted in order to protect peak hour capacity on the Smithtown Bypass and Middle Country Road. The planning department recognizes the conditions of the road have changed since the condition was imposed nearly 30 years ago. However, it is still recommended that a zone change be contingent on a traffic impact study to ensure that traffic operations of the adjacent roadway net network will not be adversely impacted by the proposed use. Although there is not currently a joint application to develop the subject site with adjacent parcels, it is important that the area of land between the intersection of Middle Country Road, Smithtown Bypass, and Alexander Avenue be developed with safe vehicular access and proper site circulation. In absence of a good design for access and site circulation, it is likely this area would not only be unsafe, but also unsuccessful and would not achieve the goal of the comprehensive plan. For these reasons, the planning department recommends the covenants remain on the property, assuring cross access between the properties for potential future development. Referral to the Suffolk County Planning Commission, pursuant to section 239M of New York State General, General Municipal Law, this application was referred to the Suffolk County Planning Commission because it is located within 500 feet of a state road. The Suffolk County Planning Commission considers, considers this petition to be a matter for local determination. A decision of local determination should not be construed as either an approval or disapproval. Uh, the recommendation, <clears throat> the planning department offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. Whereas the planning board is considered zone change petition 2024-03 Spark Car Wash LLC to change a portion of Suffolk County tax map number 800-114-45.1 from neighborhood business to wholesale and service industry and repeal covenants filed on the property and has found that one, the change of zone appears to be consistent with the town's comprehensive plan. Two, the change of zone will not set an undesirable precedent. Three, the area of land between the intersection of Middle Country Road, Smithtown Bypass and Alexander Avenue should be developed with safe access and proper site circulation. Four, approval of the site for a high traffic generating use such as a car wash should be subject to a traffic impact study to ensure that traffic operations on the adjacent roadway network will not be adversely impacted by the proposed car wash. Five, the proposal requires site access that is subject to review by New York State DOT. Now therefore be it first resolved that the planning board hereby recommends the town board approve zone change petition number 2024-03 Spark Car Wash LLC 
to change a portion of Suffolk County Tax Map number 800 114 from neighborhood business to wholesale and service industry subject to the following conditions. One, before granting any approvals, a traffic impact study shall be conducted to ensure the traffic operations of the adjacent roadway network will not be adversely impacted by the proposed car wash. Two, cross access shall be provided uh, through Suffolk County Tax Map number 800 114 Three, the covenants filed on the property and recorded on December 2nd, 2016 shall remain. Four, approval of the zone change petition is not an approval or endorsement of the conceptual site plan submitted with the zone change petition. And five, the proposal shall be subject to review by New York State DOT. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman, how are you? Yes, for the Certainly, Keith Brown, Brown Altman DeLeo, 538 Broad Hollow Road, Suite 301 West, Melville, New York, 11747. I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant Spark Car Wash LLC in connection with the property located at 993 Middle Country Road in Lake Grove. At the outset, I'd like to thank the board for hearing our application. <clears throat> As a matter of housekeeping, the public notice and mailing posting were all performed in accordance with the town code and proof of same has been submitted to the town planning department just before we got started here. Now with me tonight, we have Mr. Trent Starr. Trent is in the second row, right in the middle. Uh, he's the real estate manager for Spark Car Wash. We have Mr. Alex Holloman, seated to his left of Bowler, the project engineer. Um, we also have, uh, in lieu of Mr. Oliver Young, Alex is going to be covering uh, the architecture that was performed by GKA Architect, the project architect. We also have Mr. Nick Tortorella, PE of Stonefield Engineering and Design. He's our traffic safety expert. And we have a report done by Paul Dykes of Dykes Realty Advisors, our real estate expert. Um, by way of background, the property is comprised of two tax lots, lots 4.2 and 5.1, located north of Middle Country Road, uh, New York State Route 25 in the hamlet of Lake Grove. The property, which is currently vacant land, will also have access to Wisconsin Highway, Wisconsin Dash Port Jefferson Highway, also known as New York State Route 347, via proposed cross access agreement with the abutting parcel to the west. Directly west of the property is the Pep Boys Auto Service Center. Abutting the property to the east is a truck yard for the New York State Department of Transportation. North of the property is a heavily forested area that extends from the boundary line to Wisconsin Port Jefferson Highway. To the south across Middle Country Road is vacant land with dense ve vegetation and trees. The property is currently zoned neighborhood business. Under the proposed development plan, the property will be split zoned into WSI and neighborhood business. The applicant proposes to construct a brand new state-of-the-art car wash service with a one-story, 4,842 square feet building, three drive-up lanes, 28 parking stalls with vacuum equipment, a ride-in, ride-out curb cut on Middle Country Road, and other associated site improvements. As such, the applicant requires approval from the town board for a partial change of zone for only tax lot 5.1 which is where the proposed uh, development will be located. Kind of ironic that uh, the zone change was done by my partner, David Altman, several years ago when it went from WSI to neighborhood business. So now we're looking to convert that portion 5.1 back to uh, WSI. So as such, uh, the, re the applicant requires approval from the town board for partial ch zone change for only 5.1. Based on the site plan, which has been included in the exhibit package that I've submitted to each one of you before we got started, as exhibit one, variance relief will be required for the minimum buffer to residential uses, 5.1 feet proposed, 50 feet is required, and the number of loading stalls, zero proposed, where one is required. In all other aspects, the site will be compliant with the Smithtown zoning code. As will be discussed in further detail by Mr. Starr and Mr. Holliman, the site will feature three car wash lanes with a total queuing capacity of 29 vehicles. The applicant is also proposing substantial landscaping to enhance the aesthetics of the property. A copy of that colored site plan rendering has been submitted as Exhibit 2. Based on the existing site photos, which have been submitted as Exhibit 3, the proposed development is a vast improvement to what currently exists at the site. Submitted as Exhibit 4 is an aerial of the subject lot, also in front of you right here. As previously mentioned, the site is situated between the Pep Boys Auto Service Center and a truck yard for the New York State DOT. 
Accordingly, the proposed use conforms with the established commercial and industrial character of the area. As will be discussed in more detail by Mr. Holliman on behalf of Mr. Young, the building itself will also feature very impressive architectural elements that will seamlessly blend with other similar uses in the town. A copy of those architectural drawings have been submitted as Exhibit 5. Given the property's frontage along Middle Country Road, the applicant retained the services of Stonefield Engineering to prepare a traffic parking assessment report for the proposed development. A copy of the traffic and parking assessment report is provided as Exhibit 6. As noted in the report, our traffic experts have concluded that the project will not have a significant impact on traffic operations on the adjacent roadway network. And further, that the report found that the number of proposed parking stalls is sufficient to meet the anticipated demand at the property for its use. In further support of our request, we've submitted as Exhibit 7 an appraisal report prepared by Dykes Realty Advisors. The report concluded that the proposed development and requested change of zone will not have an adverse impact on the surrounding property values or character of the area. Tonight, the applicant respectfully requests the Planning Board to approve our application and refer our change of zone to the Town Board for its consideration. The applicant also seeks to repeal the previously imposed covenants restrictions associated with the prior Town Board approvals for the property. I'm not going to rehash the history that uh, the Planning Department did a very good job summarizing. I just want to highlight a couple of things that I think are important for your consideration. Drilling down on the request to repeal prior covenants and restrictions, we note that in circa 1994, New Development Corp, a predecessor of interest of the applicant, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> New Development Corp, yes, a predecessor in interest to the applicant submitted a petition to the town board to amend the property's zoning designation from WSI and R21 to NB to establish the restaurant to site. On April 11th of 1995, the Town Board adopted petition number 1994-03, which granted a 94 application and imposed the condition prohibiting the car wash at the property and required that the site be developed in accordance with the requirements of the NB zone. A copy of the 95 approval has been submitted as Exhibit 8. In circa 2014, three petitions were filed with the Town Board as part of the common development project that my partner brought, as I mentioned before, that sought to develop two retail buildings totaling approximately 31,600 square feet. The common development project included the property and abutting lots known as lots 4.1 and 24. The 2014 Town Board applications were all granted by the Town Board and that approval is included as Exhibit 9. The 2015, oh, I'm going to skip all that. On or about February 19th of 2020, Sun Enterprises, Inc., Haddington Company, LLC, and the owner withdrew the site plan application for the common development for the project of the three parcels. Since that time, there's been a subsequent change of circumstances with the development of the property. As noted by the Town Planning Department in a memo dated October 15th of 24, yesterday. The application seeks to develop the car wash with all development constraint just to lot 5.1. No development is proposed on 4.2 or 42. As such, it's no longer feasible for the applicant to adhere to the covenants requiring that the property be jointly developed with lots 4.2 and 24. In addition, it's no longer feasible for non-parties uh, to the instant application, the owners of lots 24 and 4.2, to provide cross acts with the owner of lot 4.1. Further, the instant project no longer provides cross access to 4.1. Instead, the applicant proposes to provide cross-access easement with lot 4.2 that will allow the vehicles and patrons to move more freely between lots 4.2 and 5.1. In addition, the cross-access with 4.2 will provide patrons of the car wash as a means of ingress and egress to the property via Wisconsin Highway. The applicant respectfully submits that the instant project on lot 5.1 significantly reduces the overall scale of the development from, 20, from the 2015 three-lot joint development project. As such, we request that the conditions of the 2015 Town Board approval and 2016 CNRs be repealed and replaced, if necessary, with new conditions and covenants specific to the instant project, as well as revert the zoning back to the WSI for only our portion of the property. So at this time, I'd like to call Mr. Trent Starr, the real estate manager of Spark Car Wash, to introduce you to their brand and their business model. Thank you. 
Good evening, members of the board. Thank you for the opportunity to present a new Spark Car Wash located at 993 Middle Country Road. My name is Trent Starr, and I am S-T-A-R-R. -R. My name is Trent Starr, and I am the real estate manager for Spark Car Wash. My job entails everything from site identification to land acquisition, entitlements, and everything up until the construction phase. I'd like, to give, I'd like to give you all a little bit of background on Spark. We were founded in 2018. We currently have five sites operating throughout New Jersey. And we raise funds on the private market to enable us to reach our goals of expanding across the tri-state area. I was born and raised in Smithtown myself, so it goes without saying that I am extremely excited about the opportunity to bring our operation to a place so close to home. We have three sites under construction as well. Those sites are also located in New Jersey. And we have a very healthy pipeline of approximately 40 sites at different phases of the deal cycle. So we are in growth mode and extremely excited about coming to Smithtown and also Long Island as a whole. First and foremost, I'd like to point out our commitment to environmental sustainability and environmental responsibility. We recycle up to 80% of our water usage on a yearly basis. That is through underground reclamation tanks. We also utilize non-hazardous, bio-friendly cleansers and other cleaners. These, these products can be found in your own homes and our kitchen grade products. We've implemented both of these processes to minimize the impact on the local environment. Secondly, our operation creates approximately 10 to 12 jobs for local residents. While some of these jobs are part-time, there are a few jobs as in the site leader and site manager that are full-time positions. These positions are have benefits, are on salary, and we have created pro programs that allow them to grow within our company. There will always be three to four members, or employees rather, on site at all times, depending on how busy of a day or season it is. We are also extremely involved in community engagement at some of our sites that we currently have and the towns that we serve currently. We have sponsored local sporting teams and we have hosted food drives during the holidays and are also open to any recommendations that the board may give to allow us to give back to the community of Smithtown. Now I'd like to walk you guys a little through the site plan. Alex, do you mind bringing up the uh, colorized site plan? So let's say you guys are heading west, actually east to west on Middle Country Road. You make a right into our site. You will follow the clear directional signage into designated stacking lanes. There are stacking lanes for members and there are stacking lanes for non-members. Upon entering the site, you will find the pay kiosk where one of our three to four employees will be guarding the pay kiosk. Non-members are informed by our employee, the different memberships that we offer, and they can pay cash, credit, or debit via a touchless payment system. The designated lanes for members, we utilize license plate technology, so it'll scan the license plate to create a more streamlined process to allow for convenience and efficiency. Once either the non-member or member has entered the site and has passed through the pay kiosk, they now enter close to the tunnel where we have our, our second employee. They will be instructed to put their car in neutral after getting their tires correctly on the conveyor belt. Once they head through the wash, the wash tunnel does, and we have state-of-the-art equipment and technology that allows our wash tunnel to do all the work. And towards the end of the tunnel, we have an automated self-drying system 
so that it eliminates the need for any employee or any personnel to have to dry down the car. At this time, the customer has one of two options. They can exit the site on Nesconset Highway or Middle Country Road and carry about the rest of their day. Or if they're interested in cleaning the interior portion of their car, they can head into our Spark Park vacuum, which is a designated area right along here. There are various different tools, microfiber towels, paper towels, different nozzles that allow them to clean each and every crevice of their car. There will be another employee in this Spark Park area. God forbid any garbage were to fall, they would want, we, we want to ensure a clean environment on site. And they are also instructing the customer on how to utilize the vacuums, the microfiber towels, and some of the other cleansers that we provide to maximize the cleanliness of their car. After they utilize the self-serve vacuums, they, like I said before, they can exit on Middle Country Road or Nesconset Highway with what I believe to be a, a, a look of a brand new car. Thank you all for your time and consideration. Alex is going to dive into some of the civil side of things and also the elevations. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Alex Holloman, civil engineer from Bowler, here to speak on behalf of the applicant, Spark Car Wash. H-O-L-L-E-M-A-N. With the summary of our application presented, I would like to discuss the major points of the project from the site engineering's perspective. Uh, the subject parcel lies along Middle Country Road, approximately 700 feet from Nesconset Highway, the intersection of Nesconset Highway and Middle Country Road. In existing conditions, the subject parcel is wooded and undeveloped. A geotechnical investigation has been completed for the site, concluding suitable conditions for development, including favorable subsurface materials for on-site stormwater management and on-site septic, with no presence of groundwater found within a depth of 30 feet below grade. This application proposes a new single-story drive-through express car wash building fed by three stacking queue lanes split amongst two member lanes and one non-member lane. Combined, the stacking lanes can allow for up to 29 cars to queue downstream of the order point before impacting on-site circulation. Once through the pay station gate, an emergency bailout lane is provided. This is seldom used, but, in, but necessary in the event a customer's car does break down or becomes immobilized and is not able to proceed into the tunnel for various reasons. Signage is also proposed with our application, including ground and building signs, along with on-site directional signage to assist customers as they circulate through the site. 28 parking spaces are pr proposed, including two accessible ADA compliant spaces and four employee spaces. All customers exiting the building tunnel can elect to turn right into the parking area to utilize the vacuum and car mat washing areas that Trent described earlier. This service is provided for no additional cost. These are self-serve systems that come equipped with a multitude of tools for customers to clean the interior of their vehicles. The site is intended to also have new proposed domestic water, electric telecom, gas, and on-site septic sanitary. Additionally, an on-site state-of-the-art reclaim system proposed that will capture car wash process water for on-site reuse within the car wash building tunnel an on-site fully enclosed town compliant trash enclosure is also proposed with adequate access for, gr for garbage pickup. Town compliant landscaping will be provided including a variety of plantings such as shade trees, evergreen trees, shrubs, and ground cover. Adequate on-site site lighting will also be proposed which will provide visibility at low light times but will meet town regulations such as dark sky compliance. The proposed building architecture has been coordinated with the proposed site design engineering, uh, the site civil design engineering, while meeting the programming needs of Spark Car Wash. 
With that being said, I'd like to now to welcome Oliver Young from GKA to further discuss the architectural program. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Good evening, everyone. My name is Oliver Young, Y-O-U-N-G. With GK and A Architects, we are the architect for the proposed Spark Car Wash. Thank you for the intro, Alex. Um, whoever's in control of the computer, would you mind switching uh, a few pages to sheet R 3.0? Thank you very much. We have an existing. Yes, thank you very much. You could go a few pages. There you go, exactly, thank you. That's an existing view looking northwest across Middle Country Road towards the site. As Alex mentioned, it's currently undeveloped. And we've superimposed the Spark Car Wash development onto that image, if you wouldn't mind going forward a page to R3.1. We also have copies of those up here on a board. The building itself is 4,842 square feet. Essentially, it's the overall footprint is 36 by 139. It's two offset rectangles, one of the rectangles being the car wash tunnel, 21 foot wide, and the, the other 15 foot wide portion is the support for that. It's the office, the break area, the accessible restroom, electrical room, and equipment room. And we've offset those two rectangles by approximately three and a half feet. So in this view here, on the right-hand side, the east side of the building facing the adjacent property, that's the tunnel. And the west side is facing the Spark Park. That's the support area. In terms of massing, the building is relatively long and low. The east side tops off at 18 feet. The west side tops off at 18 foot eight. There's also a section on the west side facing the Spark Park towards the back of the building, which tops off at 22 feet two inches. That eight inch step occurs on the north and south sides, the short side of the building. And as you can see in this rendering view here facing the road, we do have a prominent element. We call it a blade tower. It's meant as a beacon and eye catcher and also presents an opportunity for signage. This element is three feet wide, 12 foot six long, and it tops off at a height of 30 feet above grade. Would you mind switching to the next page, please? Sheet R 4.0. Again, thank you very much. This is a view looking northeast across the Middle Country Road. Again, you see the current undeveloped condition of the site. If you wouldn't mind going one page further, Sheet R 4.1. And we've superimposed the Spark development onto this image as well. This is the western side of the development where you can see the building and the adjacent spark park with the vacuum spots. The design for the building, it's sleek and modern. It has a tasteful yet catchy use of color. We have two prevalent materials on this building, a high-end EFIS system in blue, white, and a gray corrugated finish, and that's supplemented with the white exterior porcelain tile. We also have an orange accent band present along all four sides of the building. That orange accent band morphs into a canopy over the tunnel entrance, the tunnel exit, and the office area. In other areas, that orange band is flush with the EFIS finished. In terms of glazing, we have a significant amount of glazing on the east side of the building in the tunnel itself to allow views into the tunnel to see the activity and allow light in for people going through the tunnel. Additional storefront presents itself at the office area and the break room on the west side of the elevation. That covers everything in my direct. I'd be happy to Great. provide any other info. So the last video, we have our traffic expert, Nick Tortorella. I, I have a, a question. You have a question? The gentleman, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Um, the blade structure. Yes. You said that that potentially could have advertising on it? Yes. You say that, like kind of like, you know, like screen advertising type of thing? No, or? absolutely not. We only want the Spark car wash signage. Okay. That, that's so, what we're doing. It's just static, for. okay? It's not like a. 100% static. Not like a disco on a pole. No, okay, cool. 
Not whatsoever. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Right. And last, we have Nick Tortorello, a traffic expert. Good evening, Chairwoman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Nicholas Tortorella, spelled T-O-R-T-O-R-E-L-L-A. I'm a traffic and transportation engineering project manager with Stonefield Engineering and Design, uh, the project's traffic engineer, located at 584 Broadway, Suite 310 in New York, New York. Uh, this is my first time appearing in front of your board, but I have provided expert traffic engineering testimony in front of numerous municipal boards in Rockland County, Dutchess County, various municipalities in northern New Jersey, and the city of Hoboken as well. Um, so as members of our project team have explained in detail, the proposed development would construct an approximately 4,800 square foot uh, modern state-of-the-art automated spark car wash with a single wash tunnel on a currently undeveloped and wooded site along the north side of Middle Country Road, which is designated as New York State Route 25, uh, just to the east of Nesconset Highway or the Smithtown Bypass, uh, which is designated as New York State Route 347. Uh, so if we have the large-scale aerial exhibit in this package, it's okay if we don't. I assume it would be at the end. Okay, not, not a problem. Um, so, uh, no, we could just bring up the colorized site plan. That's more than okay. Yeah. So, uh, as you can see, the project is located at the northeast quadrant of the existing intersection between Route 347 and Middle Country Road. Uh, between the existing AutoZone and Pep Boys development to the west and the existing New York State DOT service and maintenance yard to the east. Uh, just for some high level context, moving east on Middle Country Road, you'll see the Smith Haven Mall and eventually the grade separated interchange with Nichols Road, which is designated as Suffolk County Route 97. Uh, and to the west, you'll see the recently reconstructed intersection between Middle Country Road and Re uh, Route 347. Uh, and eventually the stretch of auto dealerships, the building we're currently standing in right now, uh, and leading into the Main Street downtown core and the LIRR station. Uh, so if we could bring up the colorized site plan, please. Thank you very much. Uh, so my firm prepared the traffic and parking assessment report for the project that was just submitted to the board. Uh, and we also reviewed the town planning advisory report that was issued yesterday. Uh, for this application and recommended that the board approve the proposed zone change petition with three conditions that pertain specifically to traffic, uh, which are that the application provide cross access through the adjacent parcel to the west, demonstrate that the project will not negatively impact traffic operations on Middle Country Road or Route 347, and that it obtain approval from the New York State DOT. So with respect to the cross access condition, uh, the project is providing cross access with the adjacent western parcel uh, to an existing unsignalized right in, right out driveway on Route 347. And it also proposes to construct a new unsignalized right in, right out driveway along Middle Country Road at the south end of the site. Uh, this proposed configuration of site access driveways at both the north and south ends of the site satisfies the zoning change condition uh, and will efficiently distribute project generated traffic through the area so that it's not concentrated on a single roadway segment or at one specific intersection. So with respect to the traffic impact condition, uh, we prepare trip generation estimates for the project based on industry standard rates published by the Institute of Transportation Engineers, or ITE, uh, which indicate that the automated spark car wash is projected to generate approximately 80 total new vehicle trips during the weekday evening peak hour and approximately 40 total new vehicle trips during the Saturday peak hour. Uh, and just to note, that's the sum of both entering and exiting trips. Uh, these trips, again, would be distributed efficiently throughout the area via the two driveways located at the north and south ends of the site. And as such, the, the tra traffic will not be concentrated on a single roadway segment or at one single intersection. So considering the volume of background traffic traversing past the site on both Middle Country Road and Route 347, uh, the new vehicle trips generated by the automated spark car wash are expected to account for no more than 2% of the total traffic traversing on either of these roadways during the critical weekday evening peak hour. 
Um, ITE, uh, which I said before is the Institute of Transportation Engineers, also establishes that any project, regardless of use, that generates less than 50 new vehicle trips in a single peak hour uh, on a single roadway segment or on one intersection approach is likely to not impact negatively the traffic operations on that roadway segment or the intersection approach. So just to reiterate, our proposed spark car wash is projected to generate a maximum of 80 new peak hour vehicle trips during the critical weekday evening period. Uh, and again, this is the sum of entering and exiting trips. And these would be split between the two driveways and distributed throughout the area. Uh, meaning that no one roadway segment again or intersection approach would experience more than that threshold of 50 peak hour trips. So all of this is just to say that considering the minimal percentage increase of traffic on Middle Country Road and Wisconsin Highway or Route 347, and considering the industry standard ITE published traffic impact threshold of 50 peak hour trips, uh, this proposed project is not expected to negatively impact traffic operations on the adjacent roadway network. Uh, and just to circle back quickly to the last traffic related zone change approval condition, which was for New York State DOT review of the project, we submitted a stage one highway work permit application to the state indicating that the project's trip generation is below the state's threshold for conducting further analysis or preparing a standalone traffic impact study. DOT reviewed our stage one application and issued some minor comments uh, requesting additional design details and some notes be added to the design plans. But critically, they did not comment on our determination that our project's trip generation was below the threshold um, for conducting detailed traffic analysis. The state's comments are appended to the traffic and parking assessment report that we submitted to the board. Uh, they're there for your reference and we'll continue to keep the town informed of our correspondence with the state regarding our highway work permit. So I just wanna close with two uh, you know, site design items that often come up on automated car wash applications, at least in my experience. Uh, the first is vehicle queuing space upstream of the screening gate or pay stations, uh, as in before you actually enter the car wash tunnel. Uh, and will that be enough space to accommodate the projected peak demand without those queues extending back and disrupting on-site traffic circulation. The second is gonna be the supply of vacuum parking spaces on the site. And again, will that proposed supply be enough to accommodate the projected demand? So with respect to the inbound vehicle queuing, um, as we discussed before, the site was gonna provide 27 total vehicle stacking spaces in the designated lanes leading up to the pay stations. Notably, I'm not counting the two cars that are located on that plan between the car wash tunnel and the pay station themselves. So these 27 stacking spaces are provided in a combination of three ingress lanes, two of which have been designated for members only. Uh, to reiterate Mr. Starr's earlier testimony, a significant portion of Spark customers are expected to be members and would use either of these lanes. Um, their vehicles are automatically processed through the screening gate using a license plate recognition infrastructure, similar to an easy pass gate, if you could picture that. And the transactions through the gate for these members typically take between 10 and 15 seconds. Uh, the third ingress lane is designated for non-members uh, who would purchase a standalone car wash at the screening gate itself with the help of a dedicated customer service attendant. And even without the license plate recognition software, uh, those non-member transactions through the gate take only between 35 and 50 seconds. I also wanna note that if it was ever necessary for whatever reason, Spark has the ability to increase the speed of the washing operation within the tunnel uh, so that the in operation in its entirety from start to finish takes less than two minutes uh, without actually impacting the quality of the car wash at all. For reference, uh, the typical Spark car wash operation takes between two and two and a half minutes within the tunnel, uh, including the drying process. And again, all of this is just to say that the 27 total on-site stacking spaces are going to be more than sufficient to accommodate even the peak queues that could occur at the inbound screening gates themselves uh, without those queues extending back anywhere near the north-south circulation uh, road on the west side of the site and not blocking any on-site traffic flows. Uh, I, I do wanna note that you know, as part of this project, we and to even further verify our site design, we conducted queuing observations at an existing Spark facility that also uses the membership model. Uh, that's located at 586 Cross Keys Road in Sicklerville, New Jersey. 
And really during those observations, the longest queue that we observed in any of the ingress lanes was five total vehicles in the non-members lane on a Friday afternoon. And I do want to note that that PQ had dissipated to only two total vehicles in the same lane just three minutes after that initial observation was taken. And overall, throughout the peak Friday and Saturday periods that we observed, uh, the queues were no more than two vehicles in the members lane and no more than three vehicles in the non-members lane. So again, just circling back to our current application, you know, the proposed queuing space that we have on the site upstream of the pay station gates uh, would be more than sufficient to accommodate the peak queues that occurred at the Sicklerville study site, again, without those queues extending back to the circulation road north-south and impacting the on-site traffic flows. So we also conducted parking observations at the Sicklerville facility to verify the proposed supply of on-site vacuum spaces that I referenced earlier. Uh, just because the town zoning ordinance here does not specify a parking requirement for automated car wash uses. So the maximum observed demand that we saw in Sicklerville was for 15 occupied vacuum spaces at any one given time. And that occurred during three specific time periods on both a Friday and a Saturday. Again, our proposed design provides 28 total on-site vacuum spaces sized appropriately per the town requirement and also to accommodate Sparks operations. And that is inclusive um, of two ADA spaces and four spaces that are designated for employees. So clearly, you know, based on our Sicklerville observations, the proposed 28 spaces are more than sufficient to accommodate the peak demand that we would expect at this facility. Uh, but I do want to point out that having vacuum spaces available consistent throughout the day is critical to the success of Sparks membership operations. So we wanted to maximize the number of total vacuum spaces on the site within the spaces that within the space that we had available. And that's what's reflected on the proposed site plan that you're looking at here. Uh, so that really wraps up the items that I wanted to touch on specifically. So I open it up to the board with any questions if you have any or I'll turn it back over to Mr. Brown. Uh, thank you. Thank you. you Thanks. Oh. Yeah, I have three, three questions. Yeah, hours. What are the hours uh, operation. of operation? Eight to eight. Eight to eight. Okay. And our peak hours of operation are two p.m. to five p.m. Yeah, I was a little concerned. You said with the lights, eight o'clock it shut down. Correct. Okay. Uh, when you put the shovel in the ground, to when you have your first customer, how long do you think that's going to be taking? Approximately nine months. Okay. And that 30-foot pole, it, that's in the town of Smithtown is okay with a 30-foot uh, pole? Uh, no, that would be subject to uh, variance, variance. Or field. Okay. Yeah. You're talking that's a blade. The of a size the that's the highlight, the blade in the front. Right, right. The it's, blade. Not, it's not a pole. It's actually an architectural feature. Right. And it's 30-foot? Uh, Correct. Okay. 15 feet is the maximum. Height. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. It meets the building height requirement of 35 feet but to put a sign on that location would require approval from the BZA. Okay. The height varies for the sign itself. Right. Right. Okay. That was mine. Thank you. You're welcome. And just to clarify, uh, you stay in the car as you go through the tunnel. That's usually the first question people ask. <laughs> yes, Mr. Ryan. Mr. Brown, how are you tonight? Good. How are you? Uh, is this the uh, first uh, attempt to put a Jersey-based car wash operation on Long Island? Yes, it is, but uh, you know they're looking at several locations. We're also working on one over in West Babylon, mm -hmm. so they're okay. uh, anxious and they're they're very happy to be here on Long Island. And as you heard, the staff here are from Long Island. Anticipated capital cost improvements. Total. It's the total construction cost. Five, five to six million. Does five that include the price million. of the land? Uh, correct. So that's all in. Other than the uh, other than the. Uh, Height situation, do you require any other variances on the site? Just the two I mentioned in the beginning. One was for loading, and the other yep. one was a setback. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Nope. Madam Chair, um, this is just for the applicant. If you could get us a copy, uh, a digital copy of the traffic study, just so we could pull There's it actually over. one included. It's Exhibit 6 in the packet. I, a I, digital version? It was emailed. Oh, you want a digital version? It was emailed to me this afternoon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I just want to forward it over to our, our traffic safety department. Absolutely.
Can I just get back to one quick? This is consistent with the changes that are taking place as far as the town's master plan, correct? It is. Right. Are we, it's strictly a car wash, right, Mr. Brown? We're not anticipating a restaurant or any type of strictly cars in, cars out. Correct. Wash. Got it. Thank you. And as you heard, it's subscription based. Yeah. Okay, in the matter of Spark Car Wash, LLC, I move that we close the hearing. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? The hearing is closed. Thank you very much. Good okay. evening. In the matter of recommendation petition, 2024-03, Spark Car Wash, LLC, I move that we adopt the resolution as read. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. The motion is adopted. Terrific. Have a good evening, everybody. Good Let's go Mets. Thank you. Good Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then uh, I move that we adopt the minutes of the September 18th, 2024 meeting of the Planning Board. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. The minutes are adopted. And one last thing, Barbara. Yes. I, just, I put for you guys. Uh, possible dates for 2025 just okay. let me know next uh, meeting if those work for you guys okay so. well we'll take a look at that um, and next meeting we'll um, make sure that one, we'll one a month about the first Wednesday of the month so sometimes okay. it's what the is second. next meeting the next meeting is December uh, November 13th we got November 13th and December 11th November 13th so we'll talk about that then and um, so I now move to adjourn this meeting I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. This meeting is adjourned.